it's Grace, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing what I read in the month of June. So I read 18 books this month, so there's that. The first 10 books I read this month, part of a readathon, the Feel Goodathon, and I actually vlogged both of those weeks. So I really don't want to go too much on about those 10 books because I've got so many to get through and I said it all live there, so I'll link those two below. The other eight books that I read this month, I'm really excited to talk about because it was just such a good month. So of those eight books that I've read in the last two weeks of June, all of them have been four and a half or five stars. All of them. Like, how did that even happen? What is happening? So let's quickly spin through the first ten. So the first book that I read this month is Hotel de Lac by Anita Bruckner. This has been my, on my radar for a while, it won the book prize, I'd heard it described as kind of a literary romance, I was very excited for it. I enjoyed this book, I gave it three stars but what let me down was, was basically my own expectation. I thought this was a love story, um, the back says a smashing love story, it's not a love story. The book is about um, a woman, Edith, who is a kind of uh, approaching middle-aged writer and she goes to this Hotel de Lac, which is a hotel in the Alps, to kind of escape some sort of social situation, something embarrassing maybe happened, you're not really sure why, and it's kind of out of season at the hotel, so there's not many guests there. It's a very slow book, which I don't actually mind, but I think because I was waiting for this love story, I was like, and it's such a short book, I was kind of just left waiting for something. It's a book about love, I would say. It's kind of a slow, sad book that ponders like love and what it means to be alone, what it means to be with someone. I thought all that was really good. It's a lot of kind of Edith observing. It's very introspective, I would say. It's about her observing the other hotel guests and their behaviours and their manners and kind of reflecting upon her own life. But it was definitely kind of just dampened by the fact that I went in expecting something that I didn't get. Okay, so the next book I don't have, I lent it to my sister. Well, it's actually, I bought it for my sister a few years ago and she never read it. So then I was like, I want to read it. Um, but it was We've Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I'm sure a lot of you know what it's about. It's kind of a classic. It is about this family um, who live in a town in America and they're kind of ostracised. So there's two sisters, Merikat, the main character, and her sister Constance, and basically Constance was acquitted of murdering the rest of their family, but the rest of the town thinks she did it. Again, it's a pretty short book and it's just kind of a masterclass in tension and suspense of kind of you not knowing what's happening, what happened to the family, and you know, Merikat's quite a strange character. She lives a kind of semi-feral life. She talks about this sort of magic that she does. Um, so yeah, it's like very gothic, um, really creepy. The way it did like the the way the family are pushed out of the town, it worked really well, it made you feel really uncomfortable. It was just brilliantly gothic, so entertaining. Again, I read it so quickly. And actually there was like a little essay at the back of the copy that I had um, that I read that really enhanced my read. There were so many kind of layers of symbolism, some of which I noticed, some of which I hadn't, that helped really helped me enjoy the novel even more. And then I read Fair Town by Frederick Buckman. I love this book. I'm definitely not going to talk too much about it because I've mentioned it in a few videos now. This was five stars for me. Um, it's the first Frederick Buckman that I've read. It's about a hockey town in Sweden, a very small town where they're all obsessed with hockey um, and their star player assaults a girl. So it's kind of about sport, the sport and the culture around it, toxic masculinity. I really loved the way it was written. There's kind of an element of melodrama to it. It was constantly kind of tugging on my heartstrings, setting up these really dramatic, beautiful moments. Um, there's so many brilliant characters in here. I love the small town setting. Yeah, I just think this is so, so good. Really, really, really enjoyed it. Would recommend. Then I read Symposium by Muriel Spark. So I really enjoyed this. It's my second Muriel Spark. And again, the very distinctive style. Her books are kind of quite absurdist, a bit funny has a very sharp eye on kind of society so basically this is about a dinner party that's happening and on the one hand the story just stays at this dinner party but then it kind of goes back and forward and looks at these different characters how they're all connected it's a very like privileged high society group of people and she kind of really mocks them there's kind of elements of mystery and a bit surreal um, but it's just like, I mean, I read it in one sitting. It was just like a really fun read. And I really, really like Muriel Spark. Because of the readathon, um, a reread, which is Audrey Wait by Robin Benway. This is a book that I was obsessed with as a kind of teenager. It really still stood up for me. It's just a fun YA novel about um, a girl who breaks up with her boyfriend and then he writes this song for his band called Audrey Wait. Her name's Audrey, about her breaking up with him. And the song goes totally viral. They become like overnight sensations and she starts kind of going viral as well and getting all this attention. But yeah, this was just a fun little excursion back into the past for me. Okay, next up I've read 
The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and I absolutely loved it. This is five stars for me. I really like Ishiguro anyway. I've read Never Let Me Go which I absolutely loved. I've read Pale View of Hills which I really loved and this is kind of his booker winning novel. I can see that it wouldn't be for everyone. I loved it. It's basically about this butler who has worked in this big English country hall for all of his life basically. He had one kind of lord of the house for a long time now he's got someone new um, an American who's sort of doing things differently and he goes on this motoring trip around England and he just sort of reflects on his career and his life and the fact that he's now this old man who has committed his whole life to being a butler like it's not just a job for him it's it's his whole identity you know he talks about him and other butlers talking about what makes a good butler and he's really proud that his dad was a butler and it's basically about repression um, it is a quiet book, it is a slow book, but it's so beautifully, desperately sad because you kind of see all the times in his life where he has prioritised being a butler to the end of ignoring all the joyful things life could have given him. And it's also a lot about his relationship with the previous Lord of the House, who he, you know, held in very high esteem and the ways in which, in the lead up to the Second World War, his boss kind of became embroiled in some things that shone a bad light on it and Stevens is kind of struggling with the feeling of kind of having sacrificed your whole life to be a butler to this great man and then having to question whether he was actually that great um and yeah it was just beautiful like it, he's old but he's looking at the remains of the day like what he's got left of his life and looking back so yeah I just love this okay then I read Crudo by Olivia Lang which I've had for ages it's a uh, very kind of weird stream of consciousy style novel about this woman this writer called Kathy in the summer of 2017 she's a commitment phobe um, and she's getting married basically and in part it's about her and her issues around marriage and and learning how to kind of live with someone and on the other hand it's about all of the news cycle of 2017 so all Brexit stuff there's some stuff in here about Grenfell a lot of stuff about Trump and on the one hand Kathy didn't hugely work for me because she is this kind of really privileged white like art worldy woman and inherently like quite a selfish hard character to like and um, by the end of it she had grown on me and I did sort of get more invested in the dynamic between her and her husband that did sort of work a bit more for me but that really wasn't what I enjoyed about this novel what I really liked was the stuff about the news cycle it felt like this concentrated stream of social media Kathy really struggles with that and I thought it did a brilliant job of almost becoming a mirror for the news cycle and asks really interesting questions about the way that we consume the news now, how everything's so instant, everything's so constant, everything's so available to us. It was a 3.5 for me really because of all of that stuff. I found that stuff so, so interesting and there's a real anxiety that Kathy feels that I think is really relatable in terms of the news. So that I thought was really done really well. Then I read An American Marriage by Tahari Jones, which I absolutely loved. This is about a young black American couple called Roy and Celestial who went to be married for about a year and a half, um, go and stay in this hotel and Roy is accused of rape by a woman. Uh, Celestial knows he couldn't have done it because she was with him, but he is arrested and he goes to prison. And that happens at kind of the very start of the book and then it moves into kind of letters between Roy and Celestial while they're in prison. And it kind of goes on from there. It's so, so sad. Like it's so pertinent in terms of, you know, Roy's false incarceration and the problems in the prison system, especially with like racist convictions and then it's sort of about how does their marriage kind of just about marriage really in a really interesting dynamic of you know you commit your life to someone they'd only been together for a year you move with Roy and Celestial over a long period of time in this novel as he's kind of in prison gets released from prison um there's kind of other relationships in play and just asking you know can you still honor that like what does it mean to be married to someone if you've spent more time apart from them than you have together. I really loved all of this stuff. I thought the ending to this book was like perfect. I just really, really liked this novel. It was like a 4.5 for me. Then I read um, The Disappearance of Adele Badeau by Gray McRae Burnett. This is the first book in a series that he's written, which is kind of like a French detective. I'd already read the second one accidentally, so I went back to it. And I really love this setting. It's in this small French town. It's so atmospheric. It's very like noir, you get this detective, and in this one, a uh, waitress goes missing. Um, and you're following like the detective Gorski and then you're following this guy called Manfred who had become obsessed with the waitress leading up to when she's getting when she went missing and he's like a very weird guy with a lot of dark stuff in his past um, and yeah I did really enjoy this I found it like a bit masculine 
I think that's because of it being quite stylized as this noir novel. Like there was a lot of kind of misogyny in here, but I don't think that extends to the author necessarily. But sometimes it was just a bit like, um, but no, it was good and I would definitely return to this setting. Finally, for the readathon books, I read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. So this is the first YA book I've read in, you know, a couple of years probably. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was just really fun. It's about this school called the Ellingham Academy. Um, which is a school for like very gifted students, very elite, but you have to be selected for it. Um, you have to have a special talent and our main character Stevie's talent is that she's really interested in true crime and there's sort of a very famous crime that had happened at the school in the 1930s where the owner and founder of the school's wife and children went missing and never found out what happened. So you're kind of, it's actually a three part series. So the main mystery of, you know, the Ellingham family doesn't get wrapped up in here, but there's another one that does. And yeah, like I say, loved the school setting, found that really like magical, even though it's not magical, um, really liked the mystery element, want to know what happened. So we'll have to keep reading the series. And it was just very nice to return to some YA. It's actually so smart, really inclusive compared to the stuff I used to read. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Let's now talk about the next eight books that I read. The first one I wanna talk about is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I've been desperate, desperate to read this book since I saw it like talked about. It just looked so up my street. So it's about this young black woman called Amira who nannies for this white rich couple and um, the mother of which is Alex. And one night, at right at the start of the book, Alex calls Amira and says like, could you just take her out of the house for like half an hour? So it's kind of late at night and Amira has been at a party. So she takes Brie to the supermarket and they're kind of messing around together and some alert security because it's a black woman with a white child and they think that Amira has abducted Brie. It's kind of dealt with quite quickly. The dad comes, but it was videotaped and people are saying to Amira like, do you not want to go public with this? Like, this is ridiculous. This is like so racist. And she's just sort of like, uh, I don't really want to. And it's kind of about her relationship as this black nanny with this white family. Alex, the mother, sort of like girl power mum blogger. And um, she starts trying to kind of befriend Amira. And Amira kind of meets this guy who had video, the guy who videotaped the instant and Amira start a relationship. He's also a white guy. And yeah, I don't want to say much more than that just because it's such a page turner. I read it so quickly. It has so many good like twists, just like things you didn't see coming where you're just like, oh, like it's just such a good story like such a good story i couldn't put it down but it's also just obviously a lot about race about kind of amira's relationship to alex amira's new romantic relationship her feelings on being a nanny generally and kind of not knowing what to do with her life and being at a weird age where everyone's kind of moving on and you you just don't really know what to do. I don't know how else to say other than like, just such a good story. The characters were so interesting. So like I found Alex to be like a really unique character. You really like f were behind Amira, I think. I thought she was a really good character. Her boyfriend is another great character. No, he felt very original. And this was just, yeah, a very fun, entertaining book that's also really smart about race specifically, but about a lot of things so yeah, this was like 4.5 stars for me. Then I read Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woods. I feel like this book wasn't really what I expected um, and I ended up loving it. So what I'd read about this book was that it's about a teenage pregnancy that kind of draws two families together. This book is like almost poetry. I say that as someone who doesn't really read a lot of poetry or particularly enjoy like novels in verse. It is in prose. Um, but in kind of these shorter paragraphs and you flip between perspectives. It's kind of about this family. So you've got Melody, who at the time is 16. It's kind of her coming of age party. Um, and then her parents and her grandparents. The narrative structure moves in a really interesting way between Melody now, how Melody came to be. Her parents had her when they were teenagers and moved in with Melody's mother's parents. And then you kind of move just like so beautifully and seamlessly through these generations, not in a linear way at all. So you're kind of with Melody and then you see her parents and what happened with them, but then also like her grandmother, um, whose family had lived in Tulsa and when she was a child witnessed like a race massacre there. So you sort of go as far back as Melody's great grandmother and then you see on her father's side, his mother. It's just like the story of this family's life and of their history and of kind of the patterns and the way that each kind of layer of, not necessarily trauma, but an experience affects this next generation. As I say, I just found the like prose in this stunning. It just washed over you. The language I felt was just so beautiful that despite 
not having a lot of time maybe to make you connect to the characters I really felt like I was it's kind of free direct indirect so you're moving into all of their minds it's kind of haunting the stuff about the race massacre especially and just how race affects their lives but also about sexuality and about you know motherhood your relationship to your own mother so yeah I'm not very explaining that very well I don't think but it was five stars it was gorgeous if you like kind of like big family epics which this isn't in a way because it is kind of slighter it's completely readable writing but it is kind of lyrical I would say um and yeah gorgeous just gorgeous and then I read All Birds Singing by Evie Wilde so I read The Bass Rock last month and really loved it um and I wanted to go back and read her first novel this is such a a brilliant book I absolutely loved it I gave this five stars so it's about this woman called Jake um and you follow her across two timelines so on one timeline she is in her native Australia um working as a sheep farmer kind of in the outback with a group of people um and in the second timeline she's living in an isolated island in the UK um as a sheep farmer so the Australian timeline moves backwards over her years in Australia and then the timeline in England is the present and that moves forward. I don't know if some people did find it confusing, I didn't because you're in the boiling hot baking dry Australia or in your in the wet stormy creepy English fields like they were so distinct. So in the present time something starts to kind of kill her sheep and she's kind of quite paranoid kind of haunted. This man arrives to the farm and she doesn't know if she can trust him or not and then the Australian timeline you know something bad's happened and that's why she's kind of running away on the sheep farm and you you work back it's just so well written like sheep shearing sheep farming is such a specific thing I've never read about before but I don't know so rich with possibilities for where this book went I think if you don't like open endings then it, maybe if you don't like that avoid it the only reason this isn't like a I think it's five stars but the way that the Australian timeline works you end kind of at the very start of her story and like I said I love that technique so much and I thought it was so effective every time we went back you got more of her story which was gripping and compelling and heartbreaking like there's a lot of like really violent kind of disturbing stuff in this so then the very end this thing you've been kind of building to I just felt fell a bit short for me it's obviously difficult to say without kind of spoilers but you get this like big climax of like what happened what's been driving her Australian storyline and it like almost worked for me like there was a, an element to it that was really brutal and shocking and wow blew me away and then part of it that just felt like not enough it felt too um juvenile for for what this book's about so it's not like a perfect five stars just because of that but it is brilliant I'll read everything else Evie Wilde writes I read swing time by Zadie Smith so I loved this book so much again this was five stars for me it's about two girls mixed race girls who meet at a dance class when they were about when they're like young girls maybe like nine years old and they both live on the same council estate and the girls kind of develop a real affinity they both have this love for dancing and this love for kind of Fred Astaire and watching all these old videos Tracy's an extremely talented dancer and our nameless main character is sort of less so and it's about their relationship this book takes you so many places again I really like the narrative style it's really free you sort of spend a good amount of time in their childhood but then you sort of move always forward but in a very free and easy way so you're following our nameless protagonist she gets this job working for like an extremely famous pop star I guess it would be like Madonna or Britney Spears or someone like that so it's kind of set in London and then in America and then in West Africa they don't explicitly say it from the geography described I, th I think it's meant to be the Gambia I could be wrong the stuff in West Africa was brilliant basically this woman who our nameless character is working for decides she wants to set up this charity project in West Africa and so our nameless protagonist spends a lot of what mouthful spends a lot of time there and how she feels about that and says a lot of interesting stuff about the experience of being being black and then as this character is and then going to an African country where you sort of do belong or don't belong and how that juxtaposes the way you are in your homeland as a non-white British person I don't know it was just extremely interesting it had a lot to say on kind of the white savior about kind of class there's just so much in this book like it's a sweeping narrative that's also like a searing social commentary the only thing i mean this is a five star book because i 
can't fault it like I really can't criticize it you get less emotionally connected to the characters than I'm used to slash that I usually like I mean you don't get a name for our character she does kind of hold everyone at arm's length but even so it's still five stars I absolutely loved it then I read everything I never told you by Celeste Ng I read a lot of fires everywhere in May and really really loved it kind of more much more than I expected to so I picked up her debut this is oh god it's so gorgeous it's so sad basically it's about this family and their eldest daughter Lydia is dead you know that immediately it's the first thing the book tells you the family don't know it yet but they find out soon and then it's about their grief trying to understand what happened to her and looking back at the, the history of their family and it's really just a portrait of a family but more specifically the childhood that these three children experienced so the father James is a professor his parents are Asian but he was born in America he's an American citizen he's never lived anywhere else but he has extremely a extremely difficult relationship with his own kind of identity because he's been shunned all of his life he's had racist comments made to him he's never felt like he belonged he met the mother Marilyn at university she's kind of a white American girl every character in this book is flawed the parents especially it's about the way this family kind of hurts each other and loves each other and get a lot of stuff in here that's happened to them as a family that's kind of impacted the situation which was good but also like it is just heartbreaking like none of them are completely to blame as well as none of them are blameless it's heartbreaking because they all kind of do love each other and want the best and it's just how it goes horribly wrong so Lydia has a lot of kind of pressure put on her and her brother feels the push and pull of that so she feels too much she feels a kind of absence of that and felt very moved by the end um and yeah like i say a lot of stuff about race it's really heartbreaking but also just about family and i read americana by chimamanda ngozi Dichi. i love this it's huge i raced through it it was so good this is about a i guess ostensibly it's kind of a love story and also a story about race so the love story you've got Ethamelu and abinze who are this young couple um, from Nigeria who get together in high school and are kind of a perfect couple like they're a gorgeous couple they are such a good relationship they're both such good characters and um, you're kind of more following Ifemelu in her childhood and then when she meets Abinze and yeah you just really root for them they both kind of have this idea that they might like to go to America prospects in Nigeria aren't great there's a lot of stuff about this sort of corrupt government in Nigeria and Ifemelu gets a scholarship to study in American University. So she goes to America, um, Abinze goes to London, and they both end up back in Nigeria. So you know that at the start of the book, if Melu is in America, has been living there for a long time, but you know she's moving back to Nigeria, and then you sort of go back in time and then forwards in time. When she's in America, she kind of has a blog about race, and I found this book so interesting in terms of looking at the perspective of a Nigerian person in America. So in her blog, she kind of writes about non-American blacks and American blacks and how different that experience is because in Nigeria racism you know racism is absent in that there is no kind of black and white dichotomy um, and that the difference is an experience of someone now living in America and what their ancestors will have gone through as a black person in America compared to the experience in Nigeria and other African countries so I just found all that fascinating. I really found a few years ago that it's crazy that we think of Africa is this sort of like idiosyncratic place when there's 54 countries in Africa like you wouldn't just be like Europe you know like did you go to Barcelona did you go to Doncaster but ultimately it's a love story and it's really heartwarming heartbreaking love story you're kind of in love with Ifemelu and Abinze separately and you just want what's best for them if that's together if that's apart and you chart this journey and yeah I just absolutely friggin love this but ultimately I read The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett this is I'm sure you've heard so much about it. it's everywhere at the minute and um, it's about it's such a genius idea let me first start by saying I really like this book 4.5 stars it was so close to being five stars but I'll kind of talk about why it's this genius concept where there's these two twins called Desiree and Stella and they live in a town in Louisiana called Mallard and Mallard is a town a coloured town um you start in like the 50s if not the 40s but it's only got light-skinned black people and are quite racist to anyone who is darker skinned these twins sort of escape Mallard to New Orleans and then Stella passes over which isn't an expression I'd heard before but she basically passes as a white woman and then goes on to live her life as a white woman 
and she just disappears and Desiree doesn't know where she's gone kind of following Desiree at first talking about what's happened with her sister in their childhood she's now got a child of her own she's been in an abusive relationship that's all pretty early on in the book and I was obsessed enthralled loved the stuff about the town loved that twin dynamic just thought it was a genius I just needed to know more and I'd kind of hoped it would stay quite tightly on the twins or thought it would and on that town and on their lives even when they left the town it actually spans sort of the next generation as well so Desiree's daughter and then what happens to Stella and her daughter who obviously grows up thinking she's white not knowing anything Stella's living this complete lie um, and Desiree doesn't know where she is and it's about how the these generate what happens in the next generation how it all kind of comes out and converges so that is like essential like that's so important for the story it had to do that I've thought all of the characters were like very well fleshed out really interesting um there was one kind of I, just, I really didn't like the perspective of Stella's daughter I just felt every other character felt really kind of fresh and different and she was just like your typical spoiled brat rich kid but anyway it's a brilliant story so page turning done re like there's moments of real tension revelation um and ultimately it does such a good job in the way that it just exposes the futility of racism and the the reality of it and the suffering of it there's awful stuff in here but just showing how you know stella lives this life exponentially more privileged life because she's white and then her twin living this life I just thought it was a genius way a, such a simple effective way of showing that kind of ridiculing it so yeah I just think this is brilliant it deserves all the hype it's getting absolutely loved it so finally I just finished this like an hour ago so I might not be the most eloquent but this is Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell this book is about Shakespeare or specifically Shakespeare's son Hamlet who died when he was a child. It never at any point mentioned Shakespeare by name, so he's just referred to as like the father or the son or whatever. And it's about his family, his wife, um, his three children, one of them being Hamnet and sort of their life and then Hamnet dying and then the aftermath. I should say I absolutely love this. I think I'd rate it like 4.5 stars. Um, you set up the family, you have enough set up to really feel the impact of the tragedy when it happens and then you still, she, Maggie O'Farrell still does a lot with the aftermath of that. Um, it's hard to, I don't really want to give any like spoilers and also like it's Shakespeare's life so you kind of might know it already but it's a really excellently done historical fiction. I don't read a lot of historical fiction but the atmosphere was built really well. I like the kind of closeness it kept on this bit of Stratford and this family um, and the relationships between them. I also really like the way Maggie O'Farrell sort of interpreted Anne Hathaway as this character Agnes and the character she made her I thought was fascinating. Like she sort of almost has these like abilities. She's really linked to nature and yeah I just loved reading about her and then I also loved the narrative the way it was done so it sort of goes back and forward in time in a way that I thought was really effective and then Hamnet was just a just so beautiful like his death in the book is so sad it managed to really like move me without it being I didn't feel like just over the top and yeah I just really enjoyed the process of reading it what was really lovely at the end that's like an author's note where no one in real life actually knows how Hamnet died like his death wasn't recorded it was just recorded that he died um but I won't say how he dies but actually what Maggie Farrell says at the back is that this thing that kills Hamnet in the book is something that was never mentioned in any of Shakespeare's plays which might be surprising due to the time um, and that she thought she'd kind of imagined that maybe that's why because he just couldn't bear to write about it um, and I just thought that was really beautiful and kind of I feel really sums up how she manages to make this grief beautiful and this is from someone who doesn't really like reading historical novels or grief and I really loved it so I feel like a lot of people absolutely love it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you managed to get to the end of it and um, I'd love to hear what the best book that you read this month, how many books did you read this month, have you read any of these books? I honestly am just in awe at how good especially the second half of my reading month was like honestly these books are some of the best that I've read this year in a long time that just all happened to come in June so yeah see you in my next one bye